Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to be kicking off 6.6 .6, looking at the law of cosines. Now recall we are four different types of triangles that we're interested in solving and these first two types of triangles we already figured out how to solve using what's called the law of sines. Now remember for the law of sines we need to have an angle and the opposite side of that angle known information in order to be able to plug into the law of sines and get out information. Now this type 3 and 4 we do not have an angle opposite of, of a side that's given so with these two types we need to use what's called the law of cosines. Now we do have the fifth case which we aren't going to list here that's the triple A triangle where we know all of the interior angles and remember we briefly discussed that if we have all three of the inside angles and we have none of the sides there are actually infinitely many solutions to that triangle. They'll all give similar triangles, but the sides could have any magnitude as long as they're related to each other based on those angles. So we're really just going to be focusing on case 3 and case 4 here when we're working with the law of cosines. Now the law of cosines is as follows. In any triangle ABC we have this relationship. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine B and C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. Now notice that all three of these formulas look very close to each other just in the format of the formulas and the way that I usually have my students remember it is it's kind of like a sandwich. Whatever you have on the left, whatever side you're looking at on the left and squaring on the left of that equal sign you're going to be plugging in the corresponding angle to the cosine at the end. Whatever's left is going to fill in the rest. So if I need to find the side A, I have A squared on the left of the equals, cosine squared at the very right, and I have B's and C's on the inside. Or I have B squared on the very left, cosine B on the very right, A's and C's on the inside, etc. So if you can remember what the general law of cosines looks like, side squared equals side squared plus side squared minus two side side cosine of angle, you can remember that it's like a sandwich. The bread is going to be all A's, all B's, or all C's, and the inside is going to be everything that's left over. Now take a second to take this down, and we're going to look at a couple of examples here. So I'm not going to have this up. I'm going to take this away now. Let's look at our first example. Let's say we're given this triangle. We want to find angle C. So I'm looking for angle C. Notice this is an SSS triangle. We know what all the sides are, and we're not asked to solve the triangle here. We're really just looking for one of the angles. So I'm going to plug into the law of cosines. Now, what's important for the law of cosines is to figure out what information we need and to use the appropriate formula. If I'm looking for angle C, I need to use the formula that has angle C in it. And the only formula that has angle C, coming back real quick, is going to be this third version here, isn't it? This is the only one with cosine of big C, so we're going to need to use that formula here. Let's write it over here. We're going to use the formula C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. So we have our C sandwich here. Now let's plug in the information that we have. C is the side opposite angle C, so we have that 8 squared equal to, my side A is 5, so I have 5 squared, my side B is 12, so plus 12 squared, minus 2 times A, which is 5, times B, which is 12, times cosine of C. Now all that we have is an unknown of big C, so we can solve for this. Let's go ahead and multiply all these out. We get 64 is equal to 25 plus 144 minus 2 times 5 is 10 times 12 is 120 cosine C. Now putting all of these constants onto one side we'll get 64 minus 25 minus 144 which gives me a negative 105 equal to negative 120 cosine of C. Now dividing both sides by 120 I get that cosine C 
is equal to 105 over 120 which reduces down to 7 over 8. Okay, now we're ready to take uh, inverse cosine of both sides but first a little calculator friendly, this is going to be about 0.875 they're both about the same calculator friendly but taking inverse cosine I get that C is equal to cosine inverse of 0.875 which is about equal to 28.96 degrees or if we're rounding to the tenth this would be about 29 degrees now from here if we wanted to solve the rest of the triangle we could use law of cosines to solve one of the other angles and then the third angle would just be 180 minus our two angles or at this point actually now that we have this angle we could use the law of sines I have angle C now so I have angle C I have the corresponding side C and that's all we need to use law of sines to solve the rest of the triangle. So from this point we can use law of cosines or law of sines. And we'll see this in more detail in this next example. So let's look at another one. Solve the triangle. So here we have an SAS triangle. Before it was SSS. This is our type 3 now, SAS. So we need to use law of cosines again. Now in this type of triangle, the easiest one is going to be to solve for side little a because that's the law of cosines we can set up where we only need one piece of information. Okay. Now setting up to solve for side little a, I have that little a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of big A. So this is the formula that we're going to be using. We're solving for little a, so we're going to use our a sandwich. So that gives us that a squared is equal to, now my b is 18, so it's going to be 18 squared plus my c is 10.5, that's 10.5 squared minus 2 times 18 times 10.5 times cosine of a, which is cosine of 46.5 degrees. Now plugging this all into our calculator, this gives me that a squared is about equal to 174.5. So then, since a is positive, it's a side of a triangle, I can take the square root of both sides. I'm going to take the positive square root of the right side. Oops. So a is equal to the square root, positive square root, of 174.5, say about equal to and this in turn is about equal to 13.2 now from this point we can go in two different directions we can continue to use the law of cosines to solve for the other unknowns we'll just go and put into the information we have here this is about 13.2 or we can use law of sines just as an aside notice here that at this point I'm able to set up the equality sine of 46.5 degrees oh, I didn't give myself enough space sine of 46.5 degrees over 13.2 is equal to sine of B over 18 All right so if we want to at this point we can transition back into law of sines to find the rest of our information and of course once we have angle B angle C is very easy but just for practice let's go ahead and continue using the law of cosines so I want to find angle B so now I'm going to use the equation b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b. And I'm using this equation because I need to solve for the angle b, and this is the only law of cosines equation that has the angle b in it. Now, we do a little bit of algebra here, and we're going to see that cosine of b... I'll let you do this intermediary step on your own. Make sure that... Uh, when you work from this step to the next step you get the same thing I have cosine of b is going to be b um, sorry it's going to be a squared plus c squared minus b squared divided by 2ac 
Now in this case, my a, a is 13.2, so I have 13.2 squared plus c squared is 10.5 squared minus b squared, which is 18 squared, all over 2 times a, which is 13.2, times c, which is uh, 10.5, and this gives us about um, this gives us about 0 0.8165. Now I've carried quite a few more digits than usual. I usually do the tenths place, but that's because we're not quite done. The more accurate this number is, the closer we're going to be to angle B. So now applying my inverse cosine, angle B is about equal to cosine inverse of 0.8165, which in turn is about equal to 35.3 degrees. Okay, so this is about angle B. So we have our angle B. We have our A. Remember this 13.2 is about equal to A. So to solve the triangle now, we're just missing one piece of information. That's angle C. And remember, once we have two angles, it's very easy. Angle C is going to be the total interior angle of the triangle, which is 180 degrees, minus the other two angles. So minus B, which is 35.3 degrees, and minus A, which is 46.5 degrees. And this is going to give us our angle C, which is about 98.2 degrees. This is my angle C, just so I can square it. So there's all our three missing pieces of information. So this is how we use the law of cosines now to solve a triangle. Now in the next video, we're going to do some word problems with this. And a lot of the word problems with law of cosines deal with what's called navigation and bearing. A lot of them are related to airplane problems or boat problems, where navigation and bearing are used to navigate and we can calculate total distances given navigation and bearing and changes in navigation and bearing uh, after certain amounts of time. So we'll see how we do that in the next video and we'll see you there.